you know, so that that is uh, so. If if KPI is is developed, uh, formulated to trigger performance, then I think uh, uh, that's a good sign. Good a sign of good KPI. Um, the fourth is uh, on um, marketing strategy. Uh, I think uh, uh, Yang and, and Fred has, has elaborated on um, how we do our marketing. And finally, um, the recommendation whether uh, you know we should have uh, you know park uh, uh, you know, uh, park managers and so on. That for the you know more developed and more uh, the bigger park uh, industrial estates in Malaysia, we have you know park managers. Uh, we have like Kulin High Tech Park, uh, Senai High Tech Park, and uh, you know uh, technology park and so on. We have you know a proper system of management. But for many, many of the 595 industrial estates, we don't even know how who to contact. You know, we had problem contacting who, who to contact. We start with the state. The state said it's, uh, you know, it's SEPC. SEPC said it's PPT. So we really don't know who is actually taking care. And, and in many instances, um, the uh, once the parks, once once the industrial estates are developed, it is left to the local authorities. And local authorities have other priorities, uh, you know, um, that they have to attend to. And then you find, you know, industrial estates are not well maintained. There are lots of potholes, there are lots of roads unattended, grass not being cut, and so on. I mean, we have visited some of these estates, and they are really some of them are in deplorable state. So, um, you know, all these things need to be um, well uh, addressed so that we can really sell this good product that we have in, in Malaysia uh, to the international community and compete with the likes of China, India, and, and Vietnam or Thailand. So um, can I uh, open the, the uh, floor for questions? Yes, sir. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm from uh, Appalachian Slango, and my name is Yu Kim Sin. Uh, regard to the uh, beautiful presentations of the futures and uh, big industrial estate. But uh, out of the five I find, uh, mostly are small SMI. So uh, uh, I'm part of the industrial park management committees. So uh, as uh, Melon mentioned just now, that uh, uh, maintenance of uh, park is uh, like local council have their own uh, different activities. Uh, I found out we have uh, very difficult to obtain uh, financial support from the local authorities because they have limited fund. Uh, this problem is inherited by those developers. Uh, they just sell and then they forget about management. Not like they are doing full things and then you implement maybe a few years later down the road. But this few hundred industrial park have uh, uh, badly maintained, uh, I would say below uh, uh, standards. Huh? Uh, I'm in Pucho. I manage uh, about 1,000 factories. Uh, we don't have uh, the, the drainage have been uh, spoiled by different by uh, by wrongly re uh, wrongly recommended vegetation, the trees, all this. And then the road has been poorly constructed. We don't have common facilities. Maybe um, 10, 20 years ago, so small small factories they are not exporting and importing. Now they are doing a lot of importing and exporting. They use container. We don't have loading bay, uh, where it's very labor intensive. Uh, we don't have proper lighting in the buildings. Uh, road is not big enough, and everybody parking uh, container in or center of the road. Um, road shoulder has uh, not been maintained. They always use spot turfings, where it's very soggy. Uh, when you drive around my industrial park, TB5 in Pujo, uh, it's really below standard. When we go back to Majlis, as for maintenance, Majlis only can do back to basic. So back to basic is very poor things. Uh, recently, there are a lot of upgrades like EV5, and people building build factories, not enough electricity. They start digging across the road after and after. So you never get a good roads never get uh, so we don't know uh, that in futures probably EPU uh, immediately can allocate some fund and uh, work up with uh, whatever SSIC or Senegal State or our uh, FMN uh, Majlis or whatever uh, give us some fund that uh, small small industrial estate they do call IPMC 
Industrial Park Management Committee. It's really existing for many, many years. Uh, we run a zero fund, no, no money. So the only thing we can raise a lot of uh, uh, problem in Majlis to maintain this park. The common facility, I would like to highlight whether you can um, get ready the loading bay, a parking bay, a road and drainage are, are, are badly constructed. We, we hope to upgrade that. Thank you. Some form of organization, I know uh, different states have this IPMC or uh, Industrial Park Management Committee, but those are to address ongoing operational uh, um, uh, um, issues. But we really need to think about whether we, because we need some uh, some organization, some some form of organization that do a better planning. Because things are changing, as you say. Last time you may not need you know such heavy duty kind of roads. Now things are changing. So you know uh, if you have a proper uh, owner ownership and management, then you can do this planning uh, you know more in advance. Whereas the IPMC is looking at current issues. Yes, yes, Just to continue on the comments of um, I think the purpose of this study is not to look at what was done 20 years ago, but to address current issues, uh, future issues, you know. Uh, in Johor, we have that kind of industrial park that overgrew itself, you know. It was meant for land industries. But somehow other media industries cut into it, industries that was not suitable for that place. So um, they have linear problems, they will forever be problems. If you can pump whatever money, it will never be solved. Because the reserves are small as compared to the needs of the... This I'm talking about Johor, I think, sorry. Uh, from the, we try to solve that kind of problem at the state level. We can do very minimal work. So the, the, the option is for them somehow to shift out those big ones. And they are doing that. They realize, they realize that they cannot. What I would like to focus on is that each of these industrial players are paying assessment to the local authorities. But the local authority, for whatever reason, they forever be excuses. Their industry community pays the highest assessment rate to the local authority as compared to all the others. But they get the lowest attention. And I, I've been fighting this issue for press center in the hall. There should be some prioritization. You know? Uh, we keep telling the local authority that these are the people creating employment, creating a lot of value in terms of exports and so on. But they get the lowest attention. So I think uh, this study, if you want to address that kind of issue, and needs to find a policy decision to make the local authority either give up that assessment and give it to a private management park, park management like Pune, you know, Pune uh, They manage it very well. Local authorities, you can expect them to manage properties. They got their own problems. So I don't want to comment on local authorities. What I would like to comment on uh, is um, S is and to be, you know, that one. Um, in some instances, in one instance anyway, the 2B is very correct. In the case of the program development for oil and gas, we are starting with planning review, go to the market, then we do development. This is huge, 10,000 acres. But most, uh, most occasions, it is development first, then go to market. Because my experience, I don't know Mr. Ong will support me, 90% of the developers, or more than that, they come in and they look at other trees or other palm trees, they don't even want to talk about it, they just walk away. But they come in and they see uh, good infrastructure, good utilities, ample utilities, and then they make a decision. And that too is depending on the types of industries. It doesn't apply in Johor, uh, for example, uh, Doctor, um, you say there's an oversupply, and I just presented to the government that we are having a real shortage problem, a real severe shortage problem. So the state government has approved another couple of thousand acres for places that Tanjung Lhasa started with 3,000, 4,000 acres. They are in dire straits now. 
You talk about supply and demand matchup. You know, we plan Tanjung Lasak for heavy industry, but basically mostly on oil and gas. Uh, sorry, on uh, oil and chemical. And then we got a Spanish group that came in and took up 350 acres. As a result, they're getting the kind of investment that wants hundreds of acres. If that happens, Tanjung Lasak is going to be out of area maybe less than three years. Definitely less than five years. I presented to the government. They started 4,000 acres, you know? And I don't think they got applied for financing. No. Your study indicates a lot of financing model. People who want EPU financing. But we got in Java, we got investment that doesn't want your financing. You know, funny. Except maybe the, you know, some projects that, uh, what is it, the facilitation fund, the startup, you know? Um, they get a five billion ring investment and they say, can you give me uh, so much money for some utility setup, you know? Raw water, for example. So if you approve, can you get? Okay. So I think that's not a major concern for me. Uh, those are exceptions only. We are talking about private sector driven projects, investment, and uh, one of the support, policy supports that can be given to them. And uh, definitely, development first. That's been my experience. You don't try, try to sell a concept. Nobody's going to buy it. Uh, except the oil and gas project in Pagarang. Thank you. Just uh, a concept or, um, or a nice brochure. Everybody wants to see the reality. What we meant with uh, go to market first and, and then development is that we actually should go and tap the intelligence that exists in the market, that we should make sure that we do a demand-driven uh, uh, development and therefore we go to the market to, to collect information. What are the common denominators of industrial estates? What is, what is today's technology demanding in terms of utility supply? What's the kind of environment that they want to see? And how can we then make sure, based on the intelligence, that we develop something which is looked after, which, is, which, which people want? So, there we say, let's make sure we create something which the market needs and therefore let's talk to the market before we start developing. Let's not develop because we have a piece of land, let's be develop because we know there's a market a demand for that. That's, that's the element of go-to-market before development. Other than that, I fully agree with you that, uh, that today uh, the industries, they do want to see an environment which allows them to start as soon as possible. And I think all of these elements, those for instance are elements where Malaysia really scores well. Um, any international comparison you will see that it's very easy to start a company here that's rather straightforward to get your permits and all that. So these elements are all strengths of the country. Let's make sure we add industrial estate development to that uh, set of strengths. Uh, to comment on at uh, the outset, I think Dr. Anwar mentioned that as far as possible, uh, we should go for private financing. I think that was a statement made from the beginning. Uh, what we are actually trying to, um, uh, um, uh, the message is that the IE should be financially sustainable. Where you get the financing, of course, we, we try to encourage as much as possible uh, private financing. The, uh, the government comes in when there is a funding gap. When there's a financing gap, there's, there's a gap, you know, uh, for certain reasons, you know, uh, um, there, there is a funding gap. Only then, and it is justified that government comes in. As far as possible, uh, if you have a good business case, uh, private financing should come in, you know. So that, that's the message that we're trying to get. It's just that, you know, uh, when uh, we, we have these processes and so on, so that when uh, when they come to uh, the government for funding, we have a clear and transparent process for allocating the resources. We don't want to say that you know we're giving too much to Malacca or to uh, uh, Sarawak and not to Johor and so on. But if there's a clear uh, funding process, application process, everybody has, has knows what is expected of them when they come to the EU. So at the moment, uh, you know we just based on your application and we just make some you know, uh, intelligent uh, uh, um, judgment. But if we have a, a very uh, clear standard process of application, then everybody comes in, you know, with their eye wise, uh, eyes wide open. So I think that is the message that we're trying to get. As far as possible, 
if you you know if your business uh, propo proposal is very sound, you have a good business case. There is no reason why the banks cannot come in and, and uh, you know uh, invest. Only when there is a funding gap will we come in uh, for you know social and other other reasons. Okay. Uh, I have one comment and one question. My comment is on the second of the summary conclusion. You mentioned that you build and the company approach is costly. Uh, this is talking about demand and supply. But you're talking, you're, you're, you prefer to on supply when there is a demand. But when in the risk, if we do not actually make the product ready, Surely we will not win. We, uh, in order to get investors, based on our experience, we must make actually our we must make the pump or the product ready. Then the people will come, they decide immediately. Otherwise, actually, uh, we will never be number one. As one of the parents said, second place brings you nothing. In order to get investors, we must always we only have. One number, that's number one, not number two, not number three. So this uh, policy, either you want to supply or you want to, you want the demand and supply. So uh, to us, we feel that in order to get actually, the investors, we have to make actually the product ready, and then actually, the demand will come. The supply should come first. Secondly, on the, uh, I have a question. Uh, towards the end, you mentioned there are five steps all together. And step number three, on the uh, funding application, the yes or no, on the esteem uh, right, on the maintenance, okay? uh, and then there's a one row that GNI impact more than the government spending. If the GNI is more than government spending, why maintenance not given? And if, for example, the, the maintenance is very important, okay, because one the investor coming in, they go to any of the industrial estate. If the place is not well maintained, they will have the, the perception, okay, if the pump you cannot maintain, if I put my machine there, who can maintain and run okay, and take care of my machine? It will give some kind of the implication and impression to the potential investors. If you cannot take care of the farm, you cannot take care of my mission and my business. So that's why the maintenance is very important. So my question is, since the uh, GNI impact is more than common spending, why there's no maintenance for it? Thank you. Comments on your comments first, yeah. and then go over on the second question. I more than fully agree with what you say. We, in our report, emphasize the fact that there should be a match between demand and supply and supply and demand. There should be a match. You should develop things. You should develop industrial states that correspond with what the industrialists, with what the market want. And above all, what you say about the availability, I fully, fully agree. I've been dozens of times in situations whereby I was visiting location with investors, with industrialists, and where the local authorities showed a piece of land that today was agricultural land, and where they said, we will do the zoning, and then uh, after the zoning, we will have uh, an access road, and there will be sewers, and all of that will be ready uh, probably within the next two to three years. And the investors walk away. So I fully, fully agree with your comment, but it has to be a situation where there is a match between the balance. I think just, just to, to uh, re-emphasize what Fred say, what when we say um, demand and supply uh, go to market first before we develop, what we mean, and, and Jan, I think we iterate that, what we mean is that you must understand the market, you must really do your proper intelligence and know the demand before you decide, okay, you want to open up, you know, 1,000 acres or 10,000 acres, you know. It's not about 
being ready. I mean, you have to be ready when, when the investors come. Of course, you must be uh, ready. But the decision to open up or to expand must be based on real demands and not just the, okay. I'm going, uh, you know, we're going to develop uh, this area for um, something. Unless it is really a strategic investment, uh, uh, a strategic investment like Pungarang, where we think that we really need this, it is a very top down. As, as I think that we, we showed one, one uh, um, uh, graph just now that shows this top down and this bottom up. You, you know, mostly we're talking about bottom up. Of course, there are governments who do some very strategic investments. You know, like uh, the Pungrang, as you mentioned, uh, those, those are very top down. So th those are different uh, cases. Uh, I think Marina wants to explain uh, the financing, why, you know, some of them are thick or not. Okay. Um, again, this is a criteria that is going to be used when assessing whether the maintenance uh, fund will be given or not. Basically, maintenance is again uh, sort of. Uh, inherent a lot of inherent problems. So the criteria is looking at you know whether it has a funding gap, looking at whether you know if we maintain this, whether it actually would result in financial sustainability because it's already there and there are investors there and we want to take care of the investors. So we look at your past performance, your agency. So this is just the criteria on how we rank, it's not whether. Um, you know, if, if, if you fulfill this criteria, then you'll be there. So it's not looking at Genai Impact. Genai Impact is looking at the newer ones or the ones that you want to expand. Then we want you to think about what's the demand, what are the type of investments that you are attracting in, you know, whether they are actually the high value added one or the low value added one. So that's why the criteria is more applicable for new and expansion rather than for maintenance. Because maintenance, your we will assume that your tenants are already there. Yes. So just a, the application of the process for uh, maintenance looks at less criteria than for new uh, development. So d and I, in fact, is not as important anymore once the rest of the state is there and needs maintenance. You can actually look at the state. I think the GNI is an important indicator. Okay, GNI is something that uh, what really contributes to the country. Okay, that's an indicator. For example, the GNI impact is more than the government spending, and we know on, uh, maintenance something is ongoing. Why we exclude maintenance? No, we don't exclude. Exclude it is just not. It's not taken into account. GNI is not a criterion to assess maintenance oh. applications. Okay. So in, in, that's, that's can apply for in, in, in that sense, I read wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, can, can yeah. always can, can, uh, can we uh, uh, conclude such that uh, if GNI in fact is more than government spending, then chances to get maintenance is higher? Can um, we conclude that way? If, if we fulfill all the other criteria as well. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's a way, you know, I mean, uh, when you say yes or no, um, you know, you read it vertically, you don't read it horizontally, you know, read it vertically. So maintenance is when there is a funding gap. Uh, yes, we will, uh, you know, give maintenance for, for to ensure financial status, sustainability, efficiency, all these things. So you read it vertically, not, not horizontally. Yes, come on. For your development. I think one of your recommendations should actually highlight all those those very successful uh, industrial uh, uh, development part. The reason behind that is that I give you an example. Um, let's say this criteria will not be applicable if, for example, the, the industrial part is uh, the industrial estate is already now in development phase, like one one of them in Strawa that the, we have attracted 30 billion worth of investment. At the same time, the ratio of private investment and public investment is about 95.5% private investment, these are the investor, and 4.5% 4, 4 uh, of uh, public investment. 
You see that that show that the government need to focus on that since the investment is already there. So I think it's critical. Uh, there must be some recommendation there, highlighting some of the successful ones, and the government need to continue uh, to support this uh, this successful one. Uh, I just have uh, another point. The other one is about private funding. Uh, I have worked in quite a few uh, industrial estate, including the very successful one in. Uh, in uh, Abu Dhabi, Jabali. And the thing is that it's not easy to say to get private investor funding for industrial estate because a lot of basic infrastructure, no private company will come in, like the water, the roads, internal road, that you cannot charge toll, you cannot charge anything. And the, the whole area is owned by, by, by the government itself. So I don't know how you're going to suggest to us that to look at private funding to, to get the infrastructure together. Uh, those are my two questions. Thanks. First of all, the recommendation that the ones that are successful should be continued to be supported. I think when I mentioned in my last statement the three things that are important, I mentioned Malaysia is an excellent product for investment and it is priced at a very fair price. So we do give that recommendation. We do say, be aware that there is a great number of successful stories and that you are an important player in attracting investment. So we agree with, with that comment, or if you want to call it a recommendation. But you shouldn't be using this funding criteria for that, because that would be, it would distort the whole thing, because the investor is already in the heart. That, that's what I'm saying. We, we, uh, we understand your remark. Um, funding, public-private funding financing. Again, let's avoid misunderstanding of definitions and of words. Whether the public, whether the funding comes from a private bank, or whether, sorry, whether the financing comes from a private bank, or whether the financing comes from a private individual, or whether the financing comes from the government, is not a key issue. The key issue is what is being financed? Is there a return? And is the return such that we find back the original amounts invested? Again, the example that I gave in the introduction, if the capex, is the investment is 100, and later on, because of the investment in this industrial estate, this industrial estate will make 120, then we will be able to finance. And whether this financing comes from a bank, from an individual, or from the government, is immaterial. It is when we talk about a gap in finding back the original investment that will if we have an investment in an industrial estate of 100, and later on, because of all the income, sale of that, whatever, we only find back 80 of the 100, then no private individual, no bank, nobody will be able to close the gap. The gap needs to be closed by public money, and we can do that if we see other reasons than return on investment on the industrial estate. Other reasons like, and it was mentioned by the former speaker, the two things that we have emphasized, is there value added for the country? And is there employment created? Is there return to government? And if that is the case, there may be good reasons to do it. In Jebel Ali, and I was very fortunate to assist Jebel Ali in the very early days in the development of Jebel Ali and why should we attract what kind of industries and with what criteria. In Jebel Ali, there was a gap funding related to infrastructure, related to a number of things they had to set up up front, but always in relationship to where is the money that we can make and how much is and how big is the gap. And thus, are there macroeconomic criteria that indeed justify to close the gap. Hi, my name is Shah 
Charles Merlin from Technology Park Malaysia. I would like to make a comment on the marketing strategy slide because I keep on seeing the FDIs that have been given a lot of emphasis for industrial estates. Uh, in the case of Technology Park Malaysia, we are equally excited with the EDIs, uh, probably more excited about EDIs because we believe that this will be the real engine of growth and will provide the sustainability for the country in the long run. But I've seen that the slide has not uh, uh, addressed the DDIs, so I would like to see clarifications uh, from the panels on this. Thank you. I think the, the fortunate uh, of the uh, strengths and the capacities in this country, um, addressing the domestic market, there is no need to sell the country as a, as a, a strong investment location. I think the, um, the situation may change over the longer run as we do see that there's a good amount of outward investment out of Malaysia into surrounding countries and we sometimes need to question whether we can actually keep that investment within the country and actually within the industrial states um, in Malaysia. Um, but yes, you are uh, you are very correct. The slide you see is a slide that addresses um, marketing from an FDI perspective and that in essence is because selling to a foreign investor is a more difficult job than selling to a domestic investor because you first have to sell the country, then you have to sell the region and only then you can start addressing the industrial state. Whereas for DDI, one can assume that at least at the country level already there's sufficient information, sufficient knowledge um, with the organization. They may even be well aware of the, the, the region and the business environment itself. Um, and as such, your, your IE marketing strategy towards, towards DDI should be of a different level and should be of a different nature than, than your uh, uh, marketing strategy um, to, towards foreign direct investors, which uh, should address the different steps of their uh, taking process. And, but you're correct, it's um, an FDI uh, related uh, marketing strategy we're presenting here. But we're not neglecting DDI, I fully understand your comment there as well, but that is. Uh, Probably very important player yeah. in the future. So, uh, you know, the, the concern is that will we be excluded from the uh, funding uh, mechanism that's going to be introduced? That's, that's the, the concern. No, uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's not that way. Um, um, it's, uh, um, as you know, uh, the government is now uh, very much promoting uh, DDI, uh, um, domestic investment, and I think. Uh, there are now a lot of strategies for, for um, encouraging more DDI um, and not totally dependent on FDI. So don't worry about that. Um, yes. From uh, Inspector State Investment Center in SSMC. Okay. Uh, uh, my intention to come here is to, to know how to to listen to, to on, on how is the what is the best way to, to manage to develop to operate uh, industrial estates in the country. Uh, I'm uh, fully agree with uh, most of the findings he was presented this morning, and also I agree with the issues uh, raised by Mr. Ong uh, this morning, Adibasi, and our friend from FM Islamo. The most important issues in uh, industrial estates is about the maintenance. Because uh, at this moment, PBT is the park manage is the park managers. But as uh Vice Chairman just mentioned just now, PBT has other priority as well. But I don't know whether are you suggesting a, a new setup to maintain the industrial park? or it will be continue to be managed by PBT. If there is another body to, to manage uh, the industrial park, whether all those industries will still be, uh, still have to pay the assessment to the local authority, or they have they have to pay another charge or another piece on top of the assessment fees. <coughs> there is in terms of park management model. In the, uh, I'm talk also on demand supply mesh. Uh, from your findings, that uh, you said that we have oversupply of the industrial land, 
but in reality, I agree with the, maybe you are looking in terms of total acreage, but as mentioned by Mr. Ong uh, this morning, we are led of readily available industrial land, the land that's already complete with the infra or cities. The industrial land, yes, but the readily available land is very limited now. <coughs> Also, it related also to the marketing strategy, as uh, mentioned uh, by our friends now, is that we have to develop first, or get the customers first, then to develop, but right? which one is the best way? It's all, always a uh, chicken and egg issue. Yeah. Okay, the issue of maintenance has cropped up a number of times, and I think this is also, um, in fact, a major issue that uh, um, when we look at the, um, the industrial estate, uh, but actually nobody has any clue how much does it take to maintain industrial estates. Uh, you know, I think almost none of the uh, return customers gave us um, uh, expenditures on maintenance. And every time when, uh, when I asked the PBT, they said they don't have enough money. Uh, we only get 10% of what uh, is needed. So. Uh, it, is, it is a major issue, I agree with you, um, and going forward, we would recommend some kind of, um, you know, if, if it is uh, to be a park management model, you know, uh, who is best to look after industrial estate and how do we get enough revenues, you know, how, how do we channel the revenues in order to make sure that industrial estates are well maintained. So this will be some recommendations that we would put that we will put forward to the government uh, in order to make sure that uh, all these IEs are sustainable uh, and well looked after. The question on the mines planned, I can only repeat that indeed we agree with, with that comment. What we say is there should be a match between demand and supply. What we say is um, uh, 600 industrial estates sounds like a hell of a lot. Not all of them really play in the first league, as was mentioned this morning. And I also agree with your comment that in order to play in the first league, you have to talk about an industrial estate that is readily available and not something that is going to be available maybe three years from now. So I think we are fully in line with your comment. Uh, In your presentation, you just mentioned about the number of industrial estate is available in this finite five is quite huge. It, there should be a more detailed assessment on that part because by doing so, we can actually assess which are actually uh, workable or meet the requirement, which some of these other part, are not, some of these parts are actually not, are just by name, not by function. Mm -hmm. This is through our experience. HDC, we are in charge of Halal Park Development. We don't own the Halal Park. The Halal Park are named before we came into place. It was given by the various states. So since Malaysia has got 14 states, naturally we expect 14 numbers. Now we have got 20. So our first job is to streamline the Halal Park according to their size and their position. The Halal Park that we have, the smallest one is about 2 acres. The biggest one is 77,000 hectares. So you can just imagine the things that we are going through. But we streamline them by categorizing them according to their function and their position. In doing so, we provide a guideline to them. We have the HALMAS. HALMAS status is given to Halal Park with an acreage of more than 100 acres. If less than 100 acres, we don't consider HALMAS status. Based on that part, then we know their position. And from that also, we can see that if they are based near the port or the airport or the highway, they are better in a better position to offer to all this. So based on that scope, we managed to streamline the Halal Park. We provide the Halmas from the 20 Halal Park that we have now, 10 have got the Halmas status. Which means that they are in a position to attract investors in. Because if you have an industrial park of only two acres, you won't, don't want to promote them to the world. So we have to be rationalized on that. So based on that, we can actually determine the kind of maintenance that is required by the park. If you're part of different size, then it will be, it will be uh, some amount of funding that's required. 
In doing so, we found out that most of these are part, most of the industrial part they were going through. They lack the digital maintenance, as you mentioned earlier. Because nobody actually managed the part. So in terms of halal part development, the first thing that we ask the halal part manager is that they must have a part operator. They say must. In, to, de to develop the halal part, you must have an operator that we can communicate. Because these are the people that are going to communicate with your potential investors that eventually will run the part. So by doing that, we will know their requirement to maintain. Some of them are uh, what you call doesn't have the enough infrastructure to develop. And then to make it to, to a business structure, the halal part or the industrial part must be able to generate income. To do that, they cannot rely alone on the rental. If you have an industrial part, your source of income is just on rental, it doesn't work. So for the halal part, we suggesting a new area, which means that we are suggesting them to put up a shared facilities in terms of warehousing, in terms of logistics, so that other industrial uh, factories or other SMEs can actually join in that would be providing uh, income to the to the part, rather than it stays on, on, on the basis of leasing or just selling land. It must be a business entity to ensure that the part can generate income, which should be done. So that the study actually should categorize this according to the state. We go, we go for all the state that's available now, 595. Selangor is an exception because they have got half of it. The rest are actually based on position and location. So if you can do that, I think we have a more fruitful uh, report on what to do on the industrial part in the near future. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think this is a very positive sign. Uh, we have somebody already doing the consolidation. You know, I mean, I was a bit when, when we were told that we, there, were, there were about 25 or so halal parks. I said, uh, we, you know, I mean, can we sustain 25 halal parks? And you're already doing the consolidation and, and the careful from the PNS. Thank you.